Um, I know you're all probably very exhausted, so I'm sorry to make you perform even more. But um, congratulations on a really beautiful, beautiful performance. Um, this is just fantastic. Um, so we're gonna, I wanted to start with, by asking just a couple of questions to get us uh, to engage with each other. And then we're gonna open up to the audience. So please do stay and hold your questions uh, and we won't be long. So I wanted to, to begin, uh, in a sense, by asking about sort of connections within the performance itself and the kinds of connections that both, uh, that you were signaling with uh, working with each other and what that involved, and then your own collaboration and the practice of working and working over the last uh, couple of years and experimenting and producing something that's, that's truly both sort of innovative but classical and maintains all the classicism of your traditions. Um, so I guess I wanted to begin by asking about the kinds of connections within the performance itself. Um, you know, the Conference of the Birds is a 12th century text, it's a Sufi text. Uh, Bharatnatyam doesn't usually engage with Sufism, even though both come out of traditions of devotionalism. Um, and you know, the 13th to the 17th centuries, I'm a historian, sorry. Uh, but this is really the period where we're beginning to see new forms of devotion, um, forms of devotional love and erotic love uh, that signal relationships of deep spirituality across the northern and southern Indian spaces. So I wanted, I wanted to ask uh, each of you to maybe say a little bit about the kinds of connections that you wanted to signal within the performance, uh, what you want us to both see and hear and take away by suggesting uh, a kind of impossible set of connections, but connections that exist nonetheless. Sure. Um, shall I, do you want to start? Yes, I'll begin. Yeah, of course. Um, the very beginning idea came from, I'll make it very short, from the you know, really old Indian game called Paramapadam, which means ultimate salvation. And as a child, I have played it myself with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And once that was established that we really wanted to do, make that game board as the first idea, um, we, you know, just having the game board going up and down and you have all these various, um, the good and the bad that happens when you go up and down would make this performance very flat. So from th that is why the idea of the um, Conference of the Birds, where again, the idea is to look, to, to move upwards and to find God in yourself. You know, that was, that's the message the Conference of the Bird gives. And that is, it's very similar. So we thought that that would make a very good um, subtext. And then with that came Amir Al-Safar. And we have, we have known each other before, not as a collaborator, but as a musician. Um, so we approached him. And uh, four years later, we are, we are touring this piece. But it was not, you know, it's very easy when I say this, but it has taken all this time and very thoughtful um, ideas as to it has to be correct, you know, the dance cannot be messed with, the poetry cannot be messed with, the music cannot be messed with. We have to meet, we have to meet at a place when all of these make sense. So each of us have a role in it and um, that's how the starting point is. And then I'll let Aparna and Amir talk about it. Oh, I see. We can share, thank you. So in, in creating this work, we, um, as, as Rani said, we absolutely need to adhere to the depth of each tradition. We don't want to make any of the traditions uh, trite or, or surface just so they, they meet and they meet easily. So it was a difficult, um, it, it just, it took a lot of thought, but, but in some ways these traditions are so rich, they're so deep, they're so thoughtful, they're so emotional, they're so far beyond anything that we can come up with that they naturally meet with other poetic traditions, musical traditions, and while one has to be respectful of our boundaries and know which, which boundaries we can push, those meetings 
are inherent in, if we look back, you're a historian, if you look back at the history of India and all of the different cultures and religions and languages and everything that come together and that have met and merged, uh, sometimes with conflict and sometimes without, those are ideals that we hope to bring out here on the stage. And so for, for me, what is, is most important is this idea of communication. The poetry is incredibly evocative in its direct communication of, as you said, the bhakti tradition, the romantic love for the divine or romantic love for the human or the depths of, of hurt. Um, same with the Sufi poetry. The music is incredibly communicative. It's very, very personal. And so while we have ancient traditions that can seem to some as formal because of our costuming or because of the the lines, there is a deep uh, yearning to communicate with one another and with the space around us mm -hmm. that is, is very important to us as we create work. I lost track of the question, but, oh, no, no, it's beautiful what you said. I took it into another place, but um, I, I think that yeah, want just to reflect on what you just said, and there's a, it's all coming from a fundamental unity that, whether it's the messages of um, different spiritual traditions or languages, musical languages, the movement and how it's reflected in sound and rhythm, um, finding that fundamental place of unity, and that's why I'm so glad we had the time to let, just to sort of stew in this work. And there have been so many um, iterations of this piece since 2015. We started a few months before our residency here uh, in Abu Dhabi, which was November of 15, but we had two weeks here and then a week in Minneapolis and then a week in Florida. I mean, it was going on and on. And, and all of these conversations that were taking place and time in between to think about it, um, to the point where it's a lo there's a lot of intention that goes into sort of understanding the details, mm -hmm. but at some point within those details, you don't just gloss them over. You have to fully uh, allow those fine movements and the fine intonations of the raga and the fine intonation of the maqam, even when they look like they contradict each other, let them emerge and let them resonate with one another. And then you find this kind of space where they're all resonating in this beautiful, um, elated way that, that even I don't expect as a composer, and I don't know how it is as, uh, as from the viewpoint of, of both of you as dancers and choreographers, but it's just sort of, it's, it's like uncovering something that's naturally present as opposed to trying to impose onto it. So. I mean, I guess this, this um, brings us to also the question of, you know, both the sort of connections and the connectedness that you're really gesturing to in the performance itself, but your mode of collaboration, and you spoke to this, you know, two plus year period where you've been experimenting and kind of working together and, and learning from each other. And it would be interesting, I think, to know what, what you felt was really sort of difficult. There are unbridgeables, there are moments that can't be translated, that can't be commensurated, and then there are spaces where the connections absolutely flow, um, where the question of emotion, um, you know, the, the bodily gestures and form, in fact, the formalism allows you, it seems to me, to both sort of experiment, but do it within a very rigorous set of constraints. So that relationship between sort of constraint and freedom, uh, both in your own practices, but what it opened up for each of you as you saw the other in and through performance would be, um, I think, lovely to hear about. I mean, it could be an anecdote or something that was really difficult or something where you know, it was an epiphanic moment, but it would be lovely to hear uh, a little bit more about how you actually work with each other. I think essentially uh, Amir was outnumbered, Indians too. Um, so. <laughs> it always happens. Uh, uh, yes, I, I was. But, but ha I was happy about it. Yeah. And, 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 I, and it was, all, well, was all women at the beginning. I think that we, who? There were no, I was the only male. At the that, beginning, so yeah, you yeah. were the, you yeah. outnumbered everywhere. So we, you know, this collaboration started with, um, with a very deep respect 
for for each other as mm -hmm. artists and this idea you know sometimes you go into a collaboration thinking that this it could work or it may not work right and and you you love an artist's work but you think you know i don't i really have no idea what i what i can do with this yeah. we're just i i can't see us meeting and i don't think we ever felt that that way mm -hmm. about amir because his work, I mean, not only is, is he such an incredible uh, uh, artist, awesome. but also there's such a deep um, spirituality in his mm. music, and that is the backbone of our tradition as well. So while we are um, really touching on so many different emotions and, and topics, that's that idea of spirituality is, is so uh, strong in mm -hmm. both of our traditions mm -hmm. that I think we could, there was something very um, visceral that we could feel, and that connection was, was right. so I would say. That's kind of the backbone of the whole work. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I would say that what was challenging for us and um, was is figuring out thematically how to make sure that we were, we were shifting from one to the other. Can you say a little bit about that? Sure, so, so we have this idea of Paramapadam, or the game board, and, and snakes and ladders. Yeah. And for us, what was most interesting about that is, is are, are all the metaphors and the representations mm -hmm. of the game and all of the different lessons and the historical um, uh, meaning of the game and the, and the reasoning. And so that was very interesting to us. But as Rani had said earlier, we didn't want it to just be about traveling on the board. There was this idea of stopping at different events and opening up those events and exploring them because that's what our lives are about, about those episodes that happen. But we also didn't want it to be 60 minutes of episodes. Mm -hmm. So how could we take it from that and have it feel like it's expanding? Yeah. And you know, the, the microscope really is you know, it's yeah. opening up. Yeah. And then, um, and then it's the shifting of, of mm -hmm. the different emotional topics. So really making it more, I would say in some ways it's a very radical shift from one, one to the other, but in some ways also more subtle. Mm -hmm. So having it not be, this is the conference of the birds and this is the game board and this is the shirapti madanam and this is this, mm -hmm. not having that, but really having the different texts, the different influences layered in a way that is not as obvious. Well, I mean, it's sort of, you know, the, the voice and, and the, the hail uh, where, you know, there are, I think, three distinct moments where you sort of come in and, and you know, sing, speak song, as it were. And those are such distinctive moments where, speaking of emotion, that, you know, there's something really kind of radical that's taking place, and it's, it's so evocative and so rich. Um, so it's overuse those moments. It yeah. was it's it was easy to say, oh, we love it so much. Can you sing again? Or can you sing again? We were, had to be very careful yeah. about where we placed enough, those. Yeah. It can't be heavy, just with total South Indian music and poetry, or just Amir's music. So that balance was important. And also, before when we started, I also found out that there is a Sufi board, and there is a Buddhist board. So that was interesting that we want we were not just. And this came after we had the idea to do the Conference of the Birds, but I had no idea there is a Sufi board, and I found it on Facebook. And then I went to Cambridge to see the board. Mm -hmm. And it just made, it made sense, you know, even the hundreds of years ago that there has been that borrowing of tradition, the Hindu board, the Sufi board, the Buddhist board, that already existed. And now we are taking a different take on it. So because you don't want to do anything that is disrespectful. You know, we had to pay so much attention on what were we stepping on, what were we not stepping on. A lot of things, thoughtfulness, happen while creating the music. Even today, the if, if the, the image, as they're changing and moving, if one of them doesn't move in the right time, we wouldn't step on it. We're watching constantly to make sure that we're in the right places. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 you know it's it's so that's something we're not used to doing. We have to pay attention to. But Amir, do you want to talk about? Yeah, yeah and, uh, well, uh, and one one comp well, two challenges. One was musically um, how to merge the languages of raga and maqam because they have a lot in common, and certain modes you could say are the same, at least the same group of notes. But then in practice, the way that they're treated it can be completely different, like for instance the last 
Im there's an improvisation that uh, Arun and I do just before the, the last entrance of the dancers. And it's the same pitch set mm -hmm. in both. It's the same yeah. seven note scale. But his phrasing has such, there's a very particular way of, of treating those and, and emphasizing s certain pitches that at, at first glance are completely different from how that maqam would be used in Arab or Turkish or, or uh, I don't think it exists in Persian uh, music as far as I know, but that it would have a, a different bent. But then digging in a little bit deeper, you start to understand, okay, that note, okay, it's emphasized in this way, but it's actually pulling from another. And I mean, not, not to get too into the details, but you start to find at a certain point that in fact it is saying the same thing, just in a slightly mm -hmm. different way mm -hmm. or slightly different mm -hmm. um, nuance. And then finding where that point, and, and this was an interesting moment because I purposely chose that we would improvise a, in a sort of collective manner as opposed to you play a phrase, I play a phrase, or I accompany you, or I follow you. I, d I s specifically don't want us to try to follow each other, mm -hmm. but sort of move in parallel. And yeah. then, and that's also what Priti and I are doing at the end with the, the two vocal, uh, the two voices. Um, I'm, s I'm not changing my phrase at all. I'm seeing sort mm -hmm. of purely that maqam, and I don't think she is either, but then we find these points and these like yes. sort of magical harmonies emerge, and, and it's just, it's so beautiful, but you can't get lost in it too much. You have to continue because if you yeah. s if you sort of let yourself go with that, you it's going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. like keep moving, keep moving, and appreciate those moments, and then another one emerges, another one, okay. and so these are, but it didn't come easily. It mm -hmm. had to. It sort of you you work at it, work at it, and then these points emerge. And then the other part, just to just to be clear, that I'm not. I didn't use the um, any text from Conference of the Birds, mm -hmm. but I did choose from uh, a couple of poets that were certainly drawing on the same themes and uh, of the same era. Yeah. The reason I didn't use Conference of the Birds was first of all because it's in Persian it's and Farsi, I don't yeah. sing or, or, s or speak in Farsi. Mm -hmm. um, and there are Arabic translations, but it didn't feel right to do that. And secondly, because I was reacting to the texts that Aparna and Rani had sent me that they were using mm. and finding sort of the counterparts or the similar um, uh, poetry that, that reflected the same sentiment or the same uh, way of, of relating to the divine. Mm -hmm. So Ibn Arabi is the, the one of the poets yeah. um, who's a contemporary of, uh, I think maybe give or take half a century, but they were, they were close, yeah. uh, f f um, al Atar. Yeah. No, and I think we're, we're going to open up, I think, to the audience, but just to, I think, to note, um, you know, when, when one is kind of engaged in, in being with you, as it were, in the performance, I think sort of the deep classicism and the discipline of the training, um, you know, and you kept talking about the fact that, you know, it's about respecting the form, it's about respecting the tradition. So what one really sees is that, you know, you're able to, to both respect the, the depth of that tradition and respect it and, the, and what it calls from and asks of you, even as, you know, you're working with each other. And I think that's, that's really quite exquisite and very, very rare. It's, it's not the kind of, you know, the loose sense of, you know, doing, you know, working, d d having a kind of fusion performance or working across traditions, but it's really going very deep into the tradition and respecting the classicism of that form and then allowing, I think, far, far deeper traditions and connections to emerge. So congratulations, but I'm going to open this up. You um, so well. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> you did. Thank you. Can I add just one thing? Sure. Just that when when we're dealing with these these very rigorous traditions, for us, the definition of uh, contemporizing or mm. changing is very different. In that it c it can be radical to us, but the shift may be imperceptible That's to yes, some. But it's a huge nice. shift. Nice. So we mm -hmm. feel that we are pushing and pushing and pushing yes. and that means something different for every That's form right. and for That's us right. we are constantly pushing mm -hmm. and we're s you're still seeing the classicism and the rigor yes. and all of that but there is that constantly mm -hmm. it's just when you're dealing with something that began 2000 years ago and is constantly evolving and you're evolving it even more quickly it's still the steps are smaller yeah. seeming right. but they're huge shifts in our minds and mm -hmm. in our bodies and our That's hearts great. Like we are writing our own poetry. What the 
with yes. the, uh, you know, with the um, grammar that we mm -hmm. have received. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, just to sort of note also that you know, Bharatanatyam itself gets classicized in some sense in the 19th century, and it comes out of a longer tradition of, of a temple dance, but it's also about who is part of that tradition right. and then who gets yeah. um, kind of excluded from that yeah. tradition. And there's a very rich tradition also of non-Brahmin temple performers yes. who play and use the Nada Swaram, uh, which is not an instrument actually that classical Bharatanatyam uses today. Right. Right. But when you were playing on the trumpet, I thought, my goodness, this is going back in some sense to Sadir, which is the, the oh, yes. kind of, you know, prehistory, as it were, of Bharatanatyam. It's also a kind of non-Brahmin form. So there's all forms of sort of social exclusion that occur as uh, Bharatanatyam gets classicized. But one of the instruments, I think, that gets left out of it is Nadaswaram. I hadn't uh, thought so of the trumpet as having that role. It was amazing to hear that. It Very was played during ceremonies in That's the right. temples. Yes. Right. Because the dancers danced in the temples, that was right. there. Yeah, and I oh. would say it became more codified or formalized. Yeah. When in, it went to the, the stage. Exactly. We can't, we, we Sorry, can't hear we, you, we, we need to hear you. But we also need to have um, people from the audience um, engage with you. So I'm just, I'm going to ask if maybe we can take a few questions at a time, and then you can elaborate if that works better. Um, so please, uh, maybe we'll take three questions uh, to start with, if people have comments or queries. We covered everything. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's any questions. Oh, sorry. I won't. I'm going to give this to you because it's pretty. We can share. For you you and I can share. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a really extraordinary performance. It was a really, really extraordinary performance. Deeply moving and quite astonishing. Uh, so I'm just quite ecstatic about uh, what you've done here. I'm, uh, I want to ask if you've performed in Chennai, and uh, if you've not, what kind of uh, response you would anticipate to uh, this kind of production? Um, we have performed in Chennai. If I may answer. Aparna always does solos in Chennai, almost every year. But we have taken Ragamala on tour to Chennai, in, and we have had very, very good response great reviews, people asking us to come back. We have toured in Kerala, Bombay, Delhi, and other places. But I think it becomes financially difficult to take a big company, because in India, they have to pay taxes if they hire American performers. So the big theaters, you know, because you need a lot of technical support for this. And to perform in that theater, they, it's too expensive for them. Other than that, people love our work. What, what do you think of this piece? Uh, this piece, I'm sure people would love it. it. It'll be very much welcomed because it respects everything. You know, it's not, it's not, we didn't say, okay, let's, as you mentioned, let's just experiment. So people can't really find fault in it, whether it's technically or, you know, in, in historically or mythologically, mm -hmm. everything is correct. Mm -hmm. And no matter what question you ask about the construction of the piece, we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there was, there was a, another question. I think this gentleman had a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So she had a question. Yeah, he had a question. She had, okay. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to commend every single one of you on an incredible performance. Um, it was beautiful. And uh, I, have, I have something to say to this amazing gentleman over here. Um, I think my favorite. <laughs> no, it's, it's you, yeah. Um, I think my favorite thing that you did throughout that entire performance, aside from a lot of things, was using your makam style singing to move from, I couldn't recognize the main raga, but moving from that to Hamir Kalyani in the middle. I think that was one of the most beautiful transitions ah. I have ever heard in my life. I just want to address that. Um, I don't have any questions. I think you guys have done a phenomenal job. But um, being a makam singer, and um, I I'm kind of, kind of trained in classical music. I know how switching between ragas in Carnatic music itself is so difficult, but using a style that's so different to do such a beautiful job in the transition, I think it was brilliant. Um, Thank you. Yeah.
it was lovely, really lovely. And uh, I want to congratulate all of you for that. I don't have a question, just something that I noticed. Um, and why, uh, why did you do that or what made you decide to do that? Like the face when you were dancing, like facial expressions really are a very, very important aspect of Bharatanatyam. And uh, you kept it very simple at the face. All of you. I mean, I was sitting on the balcony and I, I, I think I noticed it correctly. So what was the reason? Why did you do that? Did you want the movements and the emotion that was coming through your movements to take up the space? What was the reason? Why did you decide to do that? Um, I would say we were pouring our hearts out and our faces were showing a lot of emotions. That was not, that didn't even occur to us for one moment. So I am surprised to hear this. I, I hope you didn't get me wrong. I'm not saying the emotions were not there. But it's just that the face oh, was... Oh, I know. I know. I think what you're asking is why, is it, why wasn't it too dramatic? Yeah. Because we, our style is not like that. So it's very subtle, very, very deep emotions. But n dance has to stop where drama begins. That is Valli's style. And our teacher, that's what she has taught us, is once it becomes drama, it is not dance anymore. So it's always quite subtle. It reaches, it's deep, but not dramatic, overly dramatic at all. None of our um, programs are overly dramatic. So when we started creating this piece and we were thinking about the vices and virtues in, uh, in Hindu philosophy, for the vices, we think uh, there's murder, greed, lust, theft. I mean, there's all of these that can be portrayed in an extremely dramatic fashion. And we had hundreds of conversations about purposefully not wanting to do that. And we said, you know, we can do, we can, we can explore war, we can explore murder, we can explore all of these things, but that is not our instinct. Our artistic instinct is to really go with the subtle emotions of humanity. And so what we wanted, we didn't want to go on the, on the dramatic, not that it's bad, but it's we didn't right. want to portray dramatic happenings. So instead what we did was portray the, the reaction of death by war, but not what is happening, not the, ac the actual Action. physical actions. And so much of this is about spiritual yearning and ascension and transcendence. And, and the paradoxes also Beauty. between Sufism and Hinduism in that idea of the release, that those ideas were what we wanted. So it is definitely more, more subtle. And it's, th it's thoughtfully done that way. It is the style. I did not understand your question at the beginning. Now I get it. I thought you said, why didn't you have any expressions? No, 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 I mean, no, no. you know, we can't do any more expressions. You. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. See, we I can get there. We'll get there. So we've probably taxed you and kept you um, for way, way, way uh, too long. Um, but this was really just phenomenal. And again, uh, just such a treat to have this and to you know, have a chance to see the, the premiere here. Um, I feel incredibly lucky and I think everybody in the audience um, felt the same. So thank you all um, for thank what you've you done. Thank you so much. Amazing. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Oh, thank you.